So, you know, there's either got to be some limitation or some sort of control. Mm -hmm. And I would just, I, I would suggest that the, the language mirror what the policy really ought to be. And I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's, it, it's a question of risk tolerance. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Since we are hoping to bring this back for second reading and adoption next month with the hope that they can be an updated policy for registration purposes and InfoSnap, what could we get some maybe guidance from the board or what your risk tolerance is so that we can come back with language next week that would be, or next month that would be amenable to the group? I, I have my own idea, but I want to let others have a chance to chime in first. And actually, Ms. Singley, I'd like to also ask you, sort of your experience and how, you know, what you've heard so far, how that would generally work for students. But I'm just, like, trying to think of different scenarios because I know some people would, like, find a loophole in this policy and, like, download stuff that, like, could be used as personal learning but could also be, like, misused. But then there's also cases of students that, you know, could have viable or, like, actual necessary needs but, you know, aren't able to download something because of this policy. So I'm just, like, sort of, like, weighing, you know, just different scenarios in my head <laughs> right now. Yeah. Thank you. Other comments on this one? As I say, I've got some, but I want you, you all to have a chance first. If not, I guess I would just observe sort of, um, I'm in an environment where uh, we also have a very uh, firm, acceptable use policy, and um, even though there are plenty of tools that um, we would like to be able to install for our, our own productivity, there is actually an app store that we ha I have access to that has only a very limited number of apps. And if you try to install anything outside that domain, the, the installation software just dies. And, you know, so you, you, you just, you have the ability to go and get some tools that are on a whitelist effectively. And the policy basically says if you try to install anything that's not on the whitelist, you're in violation of the policy and all the usual, you know, warnings apply at that point. So, Ms. Lynn. But I'm sure you've all experienced, like I have on my work computer, how frustrating that can be. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just don't even know how we find that, you know, that right balance. Um, and who monitors it is mm -hmm. probably really the difficult part. I'm looking at Miss Mahoney because <laughs> as a teacher, you know, I, I don't know. I don't have any answers, only... <laughs> Only questions. The other, the other thing that occurs in saying that, you know, we have this whitelist and access thing is the workload that's involved in maintaining that list and vetting the tools that are on it is, is non trivial. So it's just another consideration. Ms. Downs. Uh, I, I agree. I, I am not lending <laughs> any, any sort of suggestions just to say it, it's, a tough, it's a tough call because I also think it's. Um, really depends on, on students' age somewhat, too, you know, so if, if you're talking about MEH versus, you know, juniors and seniors in high school, um, you know, I think that the um, judgment, you know, of, of, our, of our older students is there maybe to handle, figure that, kind of go through that um, process better than, per se, um, an MEH student. I, I know that we've um, heard people at the MEH, parents of students with MEH students, parents of MEH students who have had concerns that there needs to be tighter control at MEH. So, um, but again, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know if that's specific to this one sentence we're talking about right now, but I would just throw that out there. Ms. Timmy. I guess I'm wondering if there's a way to limit it to their academic work. So not personal learning and productivity, but something that they need for their actual school work. Um, I don't, I mean, that doesn't maybe relate to staff as well, I guess I'm thinking of students. That doesn't, because one could enhance one's personal learning and productivity reaching the next level in a game, but, um, but that is not what, you know, yeah, I don't know. Let's try here. So. I might suggest, uh, although we could be more detailed here, that we punt, right? So <clears throat> I'm taking, you know, Mr. Castillo's not here, but his guidance is always that we should, or he, if he were here, he would be saying that we shouldn't get too detailed, that we should leave a lot of this to the school administrators. My, you know, in terms of sort of overall risk tolerance in the process, you know, I, I, I'd want to talk to Ding and Steve Knight and those sorts of folks. And maybe that 
doesn't actually need to be in the policy. Maybe we could just stick a sentence in that says something along the you know, software, additional software applications, including browser extensions, are, are to be installed only according to school policy. And then, you know, or school regulations or reference the regulation. And then Dr. Noonan and Ms. Minson and team can write out what all of those are and can refine it with a higher degree of agility, then we can adjust policy. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, I would offer that it just the first sentence could be sufficient, and it could be simply software and or services may not be installed or downloaded on the division's computer system outside of the educational software approval process, and then the details of how that all works is part of that educational software approval process. And so, so listening to all of you tonight, I, I think what I <clears throat> would like to do is, is go back and talk with our team um, to talk with Dang and Steve Knight and some of the other folks that are on the ground in the schools and some of our teachers to find out um, sort of what is the reality um, so that I can have a better um, or help provide a broader perspective about what's happening because some, some of what you're talking about already happens uh, as well and I want to make sure that we don't write into policy um, anything that becomes overly redundant and perhaps uh, becomes problematic. So if it's all right with you, why don't we go back and try to um, have that conversation and craft some additional language or, or reduce the language as necessary. I'm seeing lots of heads nodding. Um, Mr. Reitinger, you had a couple, uh, I believe one more comment. I don't know if you want to. Oh. Bring the, that forward the, or not. the last comment I'm, I'm just happy to flag, but it's a, you know, my level of caring on this is pretty small. Um, and that's the sentence added in the, in the next to last paragraph on page three that starts the school board is not responsible. So the, the sentence was added, the school board is not responsible for any loss, damage, or unavailability of personal information stored on the division's computer system. Um, to me, at least, that's wholly a subset of the first sentence, and so it's mm -hmm. unnecessary yes. uh, because that says the school board's not responsible for any information mm -hmm. that may be lost. But there may be some desire to be especially explicit about this given, you know, students leave and then two months later they don't have their access to their personal information. So I, I think it's completely non-harmful. It's just, you know, legalistically speaking unnecessary so I don't feel I don't feel that strongly about it and if it gives added comfort to have that degree of notice in the policy I'm perfectly fine with it. I think that's exactly what it did dang did think that that would be helpful for for him and his team comment withdrawal. It, it is nice to be able to point to that and can I just clarify on where it says or for any information retrieved from the internet you think we've covered every single thing in those sentences, that's enough, and that second retrieve from the internet doesn't in any way wipe out the previous information? I, yeah, I, I think it's an it's a or struck me. What do I know? Um, but the, the school board is not responsible for any information that may be lost, damaged, or unavailable when you use the computer system. That's the part I think that covers it. And then the or for any information retrieved via the internet, you know, I'd be perfectly comfortable with just putting a period after system because I think even the or for any information retrieved from the internet is duplicative as well. But okay. um, are there any other thoughts on this one? Otherwise, I have a question, um, Ms. Minson, about process. But sure. any other thoughts on this question? So my my question on process would be um, would it be most would it be more appropriate to um, you know uh, go forward with first reading with the sorts of changes that we have discussed here or to um, delay first reading and potentially waive first reading at our next meeting if we felt like the policy had developed appropriately. So I'm curious. I would propose going forward and um, having first reading, often on first reading there are tweaks and changes that then will be incorporated for second reading, so I don't see a need to not have first reading today. Okay. And it leaves the door open for third reading if, if necessary. We've done that before. At least once that I can okay. remember. Yeah. Are there, is it, are folks comfortable with that approach then? Okay. 
All right, well then, um, unless there are any other further comments or questions, uh, including Ms. Singby, if you've had any scenarios pop to mind, but it's okay if not, I just wanna make sure we've got a chance. Okay, um, then I would entertain a motion related to um, this policy. Ms. Linton. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the school board approve first reading of policy IIBEAGAB Acceptable computer system use. Thank you, Ms. Linton. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Reininger. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition or abstentions? Seeing none, first reading and the motion passes then. Thank you very much. Um, moving on now to uh, 10.01 future agenda items. Um, does anyone have any items they would like to suggest as future agenda items? Ms. Lynn. Can I just ask a question and it's partially a process question. Um, given that all our students were here tonight bringing forward a request for policy, how would we go about possibly considering a policy related to the issue they would brought forth? I've been working with Dr. Noonan on putting together what policies are coming next. The attendance policy is a fairly complex policy that's going to require a broad group of people to be part of that process to review. Um, that said, I don't, I think given what the students had to share, how incredibly persuasive they are and the sense that I'm getting from the board, um, I would propose that we could um, have a slight tweak to the attendance policy or have a separate standing civic engagement policy until we're able to spend the more thorough time reviewing the attendance policy so that the, if the board wanted a civic engagement policy for this semester, it could adopt one um, as soon as either February, if you wanted to waive first reading, or March, if we do first reading, I'm sorry, if we do first reading in March, then could adopt a policy in April that could be in place for the last two months or so of school. Um, I do think it's going to take a little bit longer to look at our comprehensive attendance policy and moving that policy towards the VSBA model policy. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Nunes? Certainly, um, I, that approach is available to you. It may be worth having a work session at some point just to talk about what the current policy is so that you have a fuller understanding of, of how decisions are made with respect to what is excused, what isn't excused how those decisions are currently made, uh, and then um, talk about what potential ramifications there could be. Um, also, I, I'd like to hear from our high school principal, I'd like to hear from our middle school principal, particularly um, with respect to what they hear and what they see in their schools around civic engagement, uh, and then also in some ways tie it back to what are the, what are the requirements of IB um, so that we, as we engage in the conversation that we make a, a pretty robust decision about whether or not we want to allow it. I, I, think it. I think it is something that all of you would be interested in probably pursuing. I just want to make sure that we have the full, um, the full picture before we move full steam ahead if that's, uh, if that's acceptable. Otherwise, we can just we can change the policy next week. Comments, thoughts on this particular idea? <coughs> Ms. Reiner. So I'm a little bit of two minds on this. Um, you know, as I, I also was uh, w thought the, the student inputs were superb and it was great to see them. Um, one of the things I was thinking is that you know, this is a valuable thing to do, but I actually have no doubt that our school administrators would approve an excused absence for appropriate civic engagement. From, and I, 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 I would, I'd be shocked to learn one of those was ever turned down. Um, so it's, it's not an emergency in that sense. Um, I believe it's handled with, I'm sure it's handled with um, the appropriate types of discretion right now. But I think the students made, and the faculty, made a number of good points, uh, including that, you know, having at least a clear rule that you can do one day of civic engagement sort of can also get the administration out of the loop of having to do things where you know, things that, that may raise questions about, you know, approval over content. Um, you know, for example, if a, if a student wanted to engage in something that was considered detrimental to the school. Um, I, I, I don't object. I, I think Dr. Noonan's proposed approach to do a work session is the right way to go. Um, as to 
And I think we ought to look through the attendance policy and, and do that the right way. But I also don't object to establishing sort of a temporary rule that 